coolant pressure. Looks normal. Watch your reactor coolant pumps. They're normal. The refueling of a nuclear power plant is a complex, exacting, time-consuming process. Each step must be carefully worked out in advance, then fitted into a prearranged timetable. The control room is the nerve center of such an activity. After nearly three years of successful commercial operation, during which it generated almost 9 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, the Connecticut Yankee nuclear power plant, located at Haddam Neck on the Connecticut River, is about to be shut down for its first refueling. In this cutaway model, the reactor is housed inside the dome-like structure called the containment. During refueling, while workmen and technicians are swarming all over the site, three areas become focal points for the operation. The turbine hall, the reactor vessel, and the fuel handling areas. Four steam lines serve as connecting links between the steam system inside the containment and the turbine, carrying steam that turns a turbo generator to make electricity. Now having briefly set the stage, let's return to Connecticut Yankee's control room and watch the shutdown again. It's late in the evening of Friday, April 17, 1970. When all is in readiness, switches are thrown, disconnecting the plant from the 345,000 volt New England transmission system. Refueling is about to begin. The next voices you hear will be those of the men who actually directed around the clock refueling procedures until the arduous job was done. As soon as the reactor system has been cooled and depressurized, a working party enters the containment to begin the refueling operation. The group is accompanied by a health physics technician who is responsible for the radiation safety of the group. The first step in the disassembly process is to remove the 50 reactor head bolts. Each bolt weighs approximately 800 pounds and has to be handled very carefully and stored. Studs are moved to a storage rack, and then eventually the storage rack will be removed from the refueling cavity prior to the flooding of the cavity. At the same time, the reactor head is being rigged for the lift of the head. Cavity walls and the floor of the cavity are thoroughly cleaned so that during the underwater refueling operation, the fuel handling is not hampered by visibility problems. Also, the fuel transfer canal is thoroughly cleaned and the fuel handling equipment checked for mechanical operation. Preparations have been made for the reactor head removal. The 125 ton hook on the polar crane has been centered to the head to make sure there'd be no drag on the guide studs. Health physics is continuously covering radi radiation monitoring at this time. The reactor head weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 75 tons. It will be moved to its storage pad. In conjunction with the reactor refueling, the secondary plant is completely inspected. This inspection consists of dismantling the three turbines, one high pressure and two low pressures that drive the 600 megawatt electric generator. The head has been lifted and is being swung over its storage rack upon which it will be lowered. The cavity is being filled to reduce radiation levels on the charging floor. The rods sticking out of the top of the vessel are the control rod drive shafts which will be removed prior to removing the upper package, 
which is now being swung over its storage rack and will be inspected by underwater TV. Once the cavity is flooded, the refueling process can begin. The manipulator crane lifts the assemblies out of the reactor core and brings them to the spent fuel building. License operators run the manipulator crane. There are 157 fuel assemblies to be removed to perform a complete unloading. It takes approximately 20 minutes for a complete cycle. Other jobs have to be performed at this time also. This particular job is removing a bolt underwater with remote equipment. In the control room, the tag board is located. On this tag board, each assembly's movement is located. You can see the assembly go from the spent fuel pit to the elevator, from the elevator to the refueling canal, through the refueling canal, upended in the containment elevator, and placed into the core for a loading. Here is a long fuel handling tool preparing to lift an assembly from the spent fuel pit storage. The assembly is then carried to the elevator and placed in the elevator for its trip through the refueling canal. The blue glow you see here is Sherenkov glow. There is constant communication between the spent fuel building, the control room, and the containment. The assemblies are checked off on checkoff lists kept in each of the three buildings, as well as on the tag board. Underwater lighting is used throughout this process, and it's very important. The manipulator crane runs on rails traversing the reactor area. The loading process does not require as much time as unloading because all the inspection has been completed. We are now moving the upper package for installation in the reactor vessel. We are making use of the cavity fill for radiation protection. The reactor head will now be lifted off its pad for installation on the reactor vessel. The two micron silver plated O-rings have been installed on the reactor head. Following this, the 50 studs will be installed and retention with the BR stud tensioners. Although the walls of the refueling cavity were washed down to remove contamination while draining, it was still necessary for personnel entering to wear plastic suits over their protective clothing as an added safety factor to prevent contamination to the personnel. 
All entries into the refueling cavity were monitored by health physics technicians to assist in clothing removal and to determine the length of time personnel were permitted to spend in the area without exceeding established exposure limits. Respirators were worn to prevent inhalation of radioactive particles and thereby reducing the possibility of receiving any internal exposures. Each 100-ton turbine rotor has been removed and inspected to ensure the complete reliability of the turbine in the future. The largest blades of this 1800 RPM turbine are 44 inches long and pass flows of steam that reach close to 8 million pounds per hour. Several modifications were performed during the refueling to improve the reliability of the machine. The insulation for the reactor head is now being installed which will be followed by neutron shielding. The indicating coil stacks for the reactor head are now being connected. The missile shielding, which is a final phase for our refueling, is now being installed. This weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 50 ton. Duct work is being installed to supply cooling air to the equipment on the reactor head. The refueling of Connecticut Yankee is complete. As it coasted to a halt under reduced power prior to shutdown, so now the plant will begin a slow but steady escalation at 3,000 kilowatts a minute toward normal operating levels of 590,000 kilowatts. Electricity for homes, offices, and factories once again hums through transmission lines to New England consumers. The initial refueling and overhaul took about two months. Time for subsequent annual refuelings will be greatly reduced. People such as those you've seen and heard will gain added experience so as to assure continued safe and dependable operation of the Connecticut Yankee Atomic Power Plant and others like it.